Well, good morning from Madison, Wisconsin, where it is a balmy and beautiful 66 degrees. Uh, I'm glad everyone here is joining us. So we're gonna give just a little bit more time while everyone gets logged in. Uh, and we're just gonna go over a few housekeeping rules in the meantime. Um, so first and foremost, this presentation is being recorded. So if for whatever reason you need to jump out of the presentation, um, or if you know someone who would like to see this but uh, is not viewing today, we will be recording this and it'll be made available on our website, um, as well as being it'll be emailed out to all of our uh, attendees here today so that you will have a copy easily available to you if you would like to reference it in the future. Um, we will also, uh, at the end of this presentation, I'll be answering some questions. There is a question bar uh, that you can type questions uh, to our presenter throughout uh, this presentation. And at the end, I will be kind of aggregating them all together and we'll be throwing them to our presenter and hopefully we'll get some really awesome questions and some great answers. Uh, this is a really meaty topic, so uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions. Um, and as always, we ask that you, before leaving the webinar, uh, complete this short little survey at the end. Just a three question survey, it helps us uh, do better with these webinars and to bring topics to you that are important to you and will help you in your jobs as contractors, integrators, and installers, uh, bring you more knowledge and more products and just being a better all resource for you. Our presenter today is Sean Fernandez from ETC. Our topic today is ECHO, exploring ECHO and ETC's ECHO system. Uh, Sean has been in ETC for a number of years, both in the uh, project management team and now in the product management team, uh, as well as being a field technician for several dealers. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing really well. Let's give our listeners just another minute or two to, to finish logging in. Um, welcome, to, and as ETC just being our neighbor just a few miles to the north of us here at FDW, so we could have, have a nice special relationship with ETC being so close by. Uh, so we thank, thank you for joining us today. Of course. And I think with that, I'm gonna let you take it away because we wanna give you as much time as possible. Because like I say, Echo and all its parts and pieces uh, is quite a meaty subject and let's just dive on in. Sounds good. So as Zach mentioned, my name is Sean Fernandez. I'm the product manager of architectural controls here at ETC. And uh, of course, I'm here to talk to you guys today about our Echo product line and how this might be able to help you guys um, with some of your AVL installations. So let's start with a very broad question, and that is, what is Echo? Um, well, first and foremost, it's an architectural control family. And by that, I don't mean we just do architectural installs. We can also do things like ballrooms, theaters, auditoriums, houses of worship stuff like that where you wanna control your house lights or control maybe even your stage lights without having to pull out a console. Um, but more specifically for people who are familiar with ETC systems, we actually have three architectural controls families. These three families are Mosaic, Paradigm, and of course the reason you're here, Echo. So where does Echo kind of fit into all of this and what makes Echo different than the other lines? So Mosaic is our first family, and we kind of consider Mosaic to be an artful integration control system. And by that, I mean, you can think of, you know, building facades where you have hundreds or thousands of LED fixtures that do some cool color changing effects. Um, or maybe you have a botanical garden with LEDs scattered throughout and the lights do some cool effects at night and change color, stuff like that. That's what Mosaic really excels at. Paradigm and Echo are very similar in a lot of ways in the sense that it's the kind of system you would interact with on a daily basis. You would have button stations or occupancy sensors and you would turn your lights on or off uh, from those devices. The big difference between the two is that Paradigm is a centralized control system, meaning that it has a processor that sits in an electrical closet somewhere and does the thinking and does all the translating of information, while Echo is a distributed system, meaning that all of my devices, my button stations and power controllers talk directly to each other and live directly in the room that they're controlling. One of the other things I want to uh, throw out there is one of the big differences between Paradigm and Echo is that Paradigm is designed to do a lot of things and control a lot, or a very large system. Um, as a result of having these additional features to be able to do all that, Paradigm oftentimes comes with a, um, a higher price tag to it. Echo, on the other hand, is designed for simpler systems maybe that 
um, just need some very basic DMX controller, you know, house lights on, house lights off, or whatever you can think of um, to give you a very cost-effective solution for those problems. So some of the control philosophy behind an ecosystem and kind of what we wanted to design it around was number one, it's individual. It doesn't need that processor and an electrical closet somewhere. These devices talk directly to one another, uh, so they don't have to go through a processor and be translated and have that information uh, spread out to all the different parties. They can talk one and on right directly to each other. They're intelligent, meaning that all of the information, the presets and zones and all that stuff is stored directly in the devices themselves. Uh, with our Paradigm family line, none of that information is stored in the controller, it's stored in the processor. But with Echo, it's all stored within the device. And finally, we want it to be scalable. Uh, and by that, I mean, I can have a button station, a power controller, and a power supply. And that right there in its simplest form is a working Echo system. Um, but at the same time, we've installed Echo in, in football stadiums and baseball stadiums. We've done some pretty large scale systems with Echo. Um, so we can definitely scale it up from a tiny little ballroom all the way up to the biggest possible installation you can think of. So some of these uh, control applications that we typically see Echo in, of course, like I said earlier, auditoriums and houses of worship. Uh, the big reason for this is that, you know, ETC is also known as an entertainment lighting company. And so we're already doing the entertainment lighting in those particular venues. We're oftentimes able to go ahead and integrate Echo or Paradigm into these architectural control situations as well. Of course, on top of that, we do have meeting rooms and boardrooms and ballrooms. We do retail stuff, we do hospitality, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, stadiums and arenas. So I could really go on forever and talk to you guys about some marketing talk of why Echo is great and why you guys should use Echo for all of your installations. But uh, to sum it up into kind of a single picture, this is why we wanted to create Echo. We wanted to avoid this, where you have 13 different light switches on a wall, and if switch one is on and switch two is off, and it's the third Tuesday of a month, then your lights will do this. But then if you flip seven, switch seven on and then switch nine off, it's gonna do something else. We wanted to give you a very clean and simple solution to be able to control your lights, to where you can walk in and just interact with one station and get what you want. So as we start to talk about the Echo product line and kind of how these systems piece together, there's a few key definitions to the Echo line specifically that I kind of want to go over so we make sure we're all on the same page moving forward. The first of which is the idea of a space. And in Echo, all of our devices are uh, assigned a space, and that is a space they control. So think about it, if I have ballroom A and ballroom B, I don't necessarily want to play preset one in one ballroom and have it affect the other. So we separate these by designating what space they're in and the devices in that space will only control power controllers in that space. A zone is a single point of lighting control. And when we first released Echo, a zone really was kind of a circuit, whether it be a relay, a dimmer, a zero to 10 volt dimmer, uh, that was really what a zone was. But now we've expanded the line and a zone can now consist of things like a DMX fixture, for example. A preset is a collection of multiple zones set at uh, specific levels. So if I want to say zone one is at 70%, zone two at 30%, zone three at 50%, and re-record that as a preset, I can play it back later from a single button. And finally, a segment. And we'll go into a lot more about what a segment is later on when we talk about the design of the systems. But just know that a segment is a series of echo devices all connected to a single power supply. As far as what the control functions are of how uh, echo works, there's a few key terms here that we want to understand as well, which is zone control the ability to raise or lower a uh, specific zone. Preset control gives me the ability to activate, deactivate, and of course, re-record a preset if I want to. Um, I can also raise or lower the entire space and control all the zones within that space. I can combine spaces. So if I do have ballroom A and B and there's an air wall in between, I can combine those together and control them together if I would like. The ability to lock out my stations in this particular space. So if I have stations that are available for public access and I don't want people touching buttons and turning lights on, I can lock them out. Of course, we have a time clock that is uh, astronomical and real time. So I can say every night at seven o'clock, do this, or I can say every night at close, do this, and then assign what time close is to a specific day. Uh, I can also, like I said earlier, re-record presets, and of course, snapshotting, um, which we'll talk about when we get to the DMX devices. But this allows me to take a picture of what my incoming DMX levels are like and play that back as a preset later on. As far as the wiring goes for Echo, we refer to the wiring type as Echo Connect. Now, Echo Connect is a topology-free, meaning that I can star it, I can daisy chain it, I can do pretty much anything I want with it except, except looping it. I cannot make a loop with it. Uh, it is polarity dependent, meaning that the red wire connects to the red wire and the black wire to the black wire. More often than not, we recommend using Belden 8471 as the wire type for this. Uh, it is a, 
uh, two wire twisted pair. Um, it's easy to tap into and all our stations are designed to take this wire type natively. And um, we also ask you to pull a ground with that as well. But if you do desire, you can pull Cat5e with it. Just know that uh, if you do pull Cat5, there is some additional hardware required to be able to make uh, the stations connect to the Cat5. So what makes up an ecosystem and how does an ecosystem go together? So there's three components that we have to have in an ecosystem for it to be functional. You have to have at least one control product, you have to have at least one output product, and you have to have at least one power supply. Now, in a single system connected to a power supply, I can have up to 16 control products and up to 16 output products, but I can still only have one power supply in that system. And this right here is actually what makes up a segment. Uh, later on in the presentation, we'll talk about how this kind of expands and how do we go from a max of 16 and 16 to doing these stadium jobs. Um, but just know within a single segment, uh, this is how everything lays out. So this is the part that oftentimes um, people start to start yawning at because this is all the technical details of all the different product line. But bear with me for a second as we go through what the products are and then we'll kind of talk about how these all to go together and how everything is kind of programmed. So the first category is control products. This is the input into the system. This is what tells the system uh, what it's supposed to do. Uh, the first set of this is the wall stations. And we have three different types of these. We have the Inspire stations, um, and these follow the decorator style format. We ship them with faceplates that are magnetic, um, but of course you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and buy your own uh, de decorator faceplates if you want a different color. Um, these come in a few different options of one button, two button, four button, eight button and four button with a fader. After that, we have preset stations. Um, these kind of follow, if you're familiar with our Paradigm line at all, these are the kind of stations that we uh, originally shipped with the Paradigm line. Um, these are only available in five and 10 button and they uh, have uh, pre-engraved faceplates on there that just say preset uh, one through four in sequence or preset one through nine in sequence. Finally is a key switch station. Um, originally this was just a lockout station, but we've since expanded this and now a key switch station can do pretty much anything a button station can do. It can be a preset activate, a zone activate, or it can still be a lockout. All of these stations are available in cream, black, and white. Um, the preset station is also available in ivory, and the inspire station is also available in gray. Next up is the time clock. Uh, so one thing I wanna mention before I start talking about the time clock specifically is if you look in the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see a note there that says aux power. Uh, you'll see that note on a few different slides as we move forward. Not all of the devices require aux power, but a few of them do. And as we, when we get to the point of talking about power supplies, I'll mention what aux power means, but just something to keep in mind as we go on. So a time clock, just as it sounds, uh, is able to control the system uh, from timed events. And it can be astronomical or real time. Like I mentioned earlier, I can say seven o'clock, I wanna do this, or I can say at sunset, I want to do this. The time clock station fits into a standard uh, two gang back box, but also um, we have a room controller that has several circuits of control in it, and you can get a room controller with the time clock built in. One of the neat things about the time clock is the built-in flick warn. And what this means is about five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever you program uh, before your timed event, all of your lights will flicker and show you what the next look is going to look like. So if it's 9.55 and you have all your lights set to turn off at 10 o'clock, the lights will flicker off to show you, hey, in five minutes, we're shutting everything off. That way you can go back and override it if you'd like. Next up is our responsive controls, and this includes light sensors and occupancy sensors and uh, vacancy sensors. Um, so the light sensors are zero through 6,500 lux. Uh, they're able to do multi-zone control. So if you have a zone that's close to windows and a zone that's offset from the windows, you can control those two uh, independently or scalably uh, to where the one closer to the window will dim down more to uh, use daylight harvesting while the second zone will stay up a little bit more than that. The occupancy and vacancy sensors. So one thing I do wanna clarify here though is that our occupancy sensors can do vacancy as well. Um, the vacancy sensors only do vacancy um, and that is a requirement by some states that say, hey, the lights have to be turned on manually but can turn off automatically. Our occupancy sensors come in ceiling, wall, and switch mount options. We do have dual tech PIR and acoustic as well as the PIR. Um, the dual tech is available in the ceiling, wall, and switch while the PIR is only available in ceiling. Um, and of course we have these in white and black uh, for all the options and then cream and gray as well for the switch options. So we also have a Bluetooth app called Echo Access. Uh, Echo Access is one of the ways that you can program and control your system. And we'll go into that at the very end of the presentation, but um, there's two ways to connect your Echo Access to your system. The first way is through Wi-Fi. 
Uh, but the second way is through Bluetooth. And in order to connect Echo Access via Bluetooth to your system, you need the Echo Access hardware itself. Now this is a one gang station. It's a blank station with a decorator faceplate around it, but you just plug it into your system and it allows you to have uh, Bluetooth connectivity directly into your system. Contact input, infa input interface, excuse me, uh, allows you to tie in third party systems directly into Echo. So if you have a separate uh, AV system and you wanna say, hey, if I hit this video preset, then it's also gonna turn all of my lights off. Uh, you can bring a contact input in from that system and tie it directly into this to trigger a preset based off of that. VACnet interface is useful for building management systems. Um, the VACnet interface exposes everything that's happening in the ecosystem. So you, you can show occupancy, you can show when presets are activated in particular spaces. Um, but of course, you can also trigger things from the building management system as well. So moving to the next category, output products. Uh, the first of which is what I mentioned earlier as far as power controllers. When we first designed Echo, this was it for the power control options. So the first of which is a relay controller. The relay controller comes in 120 through 277, a single pole, or a single zone and two zone relay. Um, and after that, we have the same relay option, but with zero to 10 volt dimmer on it. Uh, and finally, we have the phase adaptive dimmer, which is only available in a single channel, and it can be 120 or 277. Uh, one thing I do want to note is that currently this phase adaptive dimmer does not support magnetic loads, um, but we are working as quickly as possible on a solution for magnetic loads that we hope to be out by the end of the year. Room controllers is one of the things that I discussed earlier. Um, it's a small box that sits in your ceiling. It has four or eight relays inside of it, as well as zero to 10 volt output from there. So if you just have a single room and you have eight house lighting zones that are zero to 10 volt, this might be a perfect solution for you that you can mount in the ceiling and control all of those from a single box. All of these relays can be fed uh, independently, um, or they can all be fed from a single circuit that then daisy chains down to the input side of all of these relays. The other neat thing about these room controllers is that they do have UL924 input for emergency systems. So if you need to trigger all of your lights to go on when a fire alarm comes on or when there's a loss of power, you can do so with that input. And also the ability to output patch these. So if you do have multiple spaces, um, you can assign what space each one of these relays are. Next up are our relay panels. And so these are designed to handle larger amounts of loads uh, all from a central location like an electrical room. So we have actually three different types. We have the sensor IQ, the ERP main feed, and the ERP feed through. And all of these three panels do share a few things in common, like the ability to do Echo Connect natively, streaming ACN, DMX. Um, they all have a time clock in them as well. All these devices can have a zero to 10 volt card. If you wanna add in zero to 10 volt dimming into any one of these panels, uh, you can also do a contact input and of course a dolly if you guys are using a dolly system. Finally, these are all UL924 listed as well. So if you do have emergency lighting, uh, you can trigger your emergency system uh, directly with these panels. Now that said, they all do have things different. Uh, the first of which is a sensor IQ, and a sensor IQ is designed um, to have more breakers in one smaller space than the other systems. So the sensor IQ can actually take in up to 48 breakers into a single panel. All of the breakers are controllable hydraulic magnetic breakers, which means that they have a higher trip curve. So um, if you are strobing light on and off and you're loading it up to uh, a full load, a sensor IQ might be a better option for you. Sensor IQ also has one, two, and three pole breakers up to 30 amps. The ERP mains fed, on the other hand, is um, sometimes a cheaper solution if you're just looking for 24 uh, relays, but that is the largest it can go is 24 relays, um, but it does have 30 breaker slots. So while you're able to do 24 relays, you can also have a few extra breakers in there to power up uh, auxiliary things that you might need that are not relay controlled. It also does support one, two, and three pole relays, um, but it also has the ability to do a 300 watt phase adaptive dimmer in it as well. And finally, the ERP can be flush or surface mounted, while the sensor IQ is only surface mounted. The final option is the ERP feed through panel. Uh, this panel is a branch fed relay panel, so all of the relays are fed independently. This means that you have to have a separate breaker panel feeding it, um, but the ERP feed through can go up to 48 relays total. One of the things I mentioned earlier was the DMX scene controller and uh, how when we added this, it kind of changed the idea of what a control zone was. So the DMX scene controller, as it sounds, lets you control DMX fixtures from your DMX system. It gives you up to one universe and it does have a DMX in and through. The in is used to do snapshotting. So if I have a console in my system, I can take in my DMX levels, take a picture of that and play it back later. Um, it does allow me to do up to 32 presets from this. 
but I can also program different behaviors from this. Uh, one example was um, if we have a power outage, then whenever lights come back on, we want all of our lights to go to a certain level. Um, with this, you can do so by saying that when this device powers on, all of my DMX values will go to this, for example. So looking at what a DMX scene controller looks like in a system with a console, this is how it would wire up. I would have my console sending DMX to the scene controller and then DMX from the scene controller out to my fixtures. Uh, from here, if I set a look, I can go to my button station and hit record preset one. And then later on, whenever I want, I can hit, pre I can hit preset one and play back that look. Alternatively, if I don't have a console in my system and I just wanna control these lights independently, uh, using the uh, four button one fader station, I can actually grab each one of these zones and I can change the intensity, the hue and the saturation directly from the button station itself. Contact output interface. Um, earlier we talked about the input interface. Output obviously is the exact opposite of that. Uh, it just allows me to send out triggers. So this might be perfect if you're trying to trigger an HVAC system when it detects occupancy, um, or if you wanna send a, a control signal to your AV system whenever you hit a button in the echo system. Finally, the ex or, sorry, not finally, we have one more slide of this, but the echo expansion bridge um, allows us to kind of tie all of this together. So earlier we talked about the concept of what a segment is um, and the echo expansion bridge allows you to bring up to four segments into an echo bridge. So this is kind of where we get into the conversation of making these ecosystems larger to where it's not just 16 control devices and 16 output devices. This device allows us to tie four of those segments together and eventually tie those into a network. And I can have a whole bunch of these throughout an install and have a whole bunch of control points here. One of the other things that I wanna mention about echo expansion bridge is with the ability to tie into a network, this does allow you to use echo access uh, over Wi-Fi or even from a computer. So if you have in your uh, light or sound booth a computer set up, it can be connected to the network with this on there and you can actually control your system from that computer. Echo Touch is a um, fairly new product. I think it's only about a year or two old at this point, um, but the Echo Touch is a touchscreen that just integrates directly with Echo, but it can also be a standalone control system. So this does fit in a standard three gang back box. It doesn't need to be a custom back box or anything like that from ETC. Um, but like I said, it does uh, inter interface natively with Echo Connect, but also has the ability to do uh, DMX out and streaming ACN out and ArtNet out. Echo Touch also gives you 40 total channels of control. Um, and this sometimes can be confusing because we do say that Echo can only have 16 zones. So of those 80 channels, I can patch which one of those I want to control an Echo zone one through 16. And I can control more than just what Echo does if I have DMX going out of this. Of course, it does allow for up to 64 presets and four sequences to be played back. So now that we've kind of talked about what those devices are, uh, the next question is how do we power those devices? So we have two different categories of power supplies. We have the 6U power supply and the 16U. And what I mean by a U is one control device and one output device. So if I have a 6U power supply, I can have six button stations and six relay controllers in my system. Uh, same thing with 16, I can have 16 button stations and 16 power controllers in my one segment there. Now, both of these different options come in several different form factors. Uh, of course, we have a knockout one that can go directly in a back box. All of our power controllers have a built-in 6U power supply directly in them. Um, and if you go with a 16U option, then we, of course, have wall mount, rack mount. Um, our dimming cabinet can have a 16U power supply in it. And uh, I think the most popular one out of all of them, the DIN rail mount option. Now, earlier we talked about the need for aux power. One of the things I do want to mention is that um, there are a few power supplies that do have aux power. All of the 16 options, 16U options, um, come with a version without or without and with aux power. The only exception being the DIN rail option, which does come with aux power. Uh, and the reason I mention this is that if you're designing an ecosystem, while we have a whole bunch of different power supplies for you to choose from, uh, the most popular is by far the DIN rail option because it has everything you need in a very compact form and a very uh, cost-effective uh, way of going about it. So let's kind of look at some risers and see how all of this goes together. So this right here is a basic echo system, right? Looking from left to right, I have my echo button station with a built-in sensor. I have my 6U power supply right there. And then I have a zero to 10 volt controller to the right of that. So this right here, I can turn my lights on and off and everything works great. Expanding that a little bit, this allows me to tie in uh, multiple control devices into a room controller. So in this case, I have four separate control devices, a button station, a wall aux sensor, a ceiling aux sensor, and a light sensor. Um, but in my eight zone room controller, I can control 
all of these relays together from one of those devices, or I can choose independent relays I want to control from each button on the button station, or I can say that I want my light sensor to only affect a couple of those zones. This is the first look at kind of how we tie all of this in together um, with an Echo Touch. So an Echo Touch can live directly on this line and just acts as a, um, it's technically it's an output product, but in this case it can also be a control product in the sense of I can play back presets from the Echo Touch. So I can play back a preset one on my button station and then on my touch screen, it will reflect that preset one has been played and I can change it from there as well. Uh, looking at a system with a console here. So this is kind of how it looked like if I had a console coming into my system, even though the Echo Touch does have a DMX output, it doesn't have a DMX input for snapshot. So in these cases, I would encourage you to use an Echo DMX scene controller. But in this case, I have my light board there on the left. It's speaking DMX into my system, going through the DMX scene controller and out to my fixtures. Uh, from the touchscreen, I can record these presets just like as if it was a button station, and I can go back and I can play those back later on. But the touchscreen, of course, also allows me to do um, interactive controls with those DMX fixtures as well, including a color wheel. So if I don't have a console on my system, I can control it directly from the Echo Touch. Uh, finally, this uh, system right here kind of breaks the rules of what an Echo system is, um, but this is actually not an Echo system. It is a system based around the Echo Touch as a standalone controller. Uh, the reason I wanted to show you guys this, even though it's technically not a full Echo system, is to show that an Echo Touch can be a standalone device. I can put this on a system, have network running to it, and going up to gateways that then speak DMX directly to house lights or to my stage lights or to whatever they may be, but I don't need the rest of the rules of an Echo system if I'm doing a standalone Echo Touch controller. So we've kind of talked a little bit about what the product line is and how these systems go together. Um, and now I kind of want to go into how this system is programmed. One thing I do want to mention though is that um, the Echo systems natively out of the box can be programmed directly from uh, the switches on the back of the devices themselves. You can set up what zone it is, what space it is, and you technically don't need to use the Echo Access app at all. However, the Echo Access app does give you some additional features. The first of which is the ability to control your system. So in here, I can go into the app and I can actually select different presets I want to play back. I can also dim different zones up and down. And of course, if I have a DMX fixture, I have the ability to do uh, a color wheel on there and set what color I want my DMX fixture to be. I also have the ability to do configuration options. So what each one of those look like is with the Inspire button station, for example, I can say, hey, if I push button one here, it's gonna activate preset one. But instead I can make button one um, turn zone one on, or I can make it zone select, or I can make it um, my space off or whatever I want that to be. But I also get different actions for the push function, for a push and hold, and of course for double tapping the button. Same kind of concept with the Inspire Station with the wheel. Um, this one is neat because I can grab a button, say I want to select zone one, and then use that wheel to do either intensity, hue, or saturation. The key switch station, like I mentioned earlier, this used to be just a lockout station, but if you have echo access in your system, the key switch station can actually do a lot more now, including preset activate. Uh, the light sensor and uh, occupancy sensor. The light sensor, I can set up what light levels I want to maintain in my room, and I can have my lights dim up and down to make sure that I maintain that level. Um, with the occupancy sensor, I can set timeout periods. Um, so if my room is vacant for 10 minutes or so, my lights will turn off. I can also set what preset I'd like to activate uh, when somebody walks into the room. So echo access interface, this just counts towards the Bluetooth interface if you have one in your system, um, but it allows you the ability to name what the Bluetooth echo access is. So if I have one in five rooms, um, I can name each room what it is. So as I'm connecting to the system, I know which room I'm connecting to, but also gives me the ability to see uh, or control what I'm allowed to see from echo access. The 600 watt dimmer allows me to set to uh, the phase that I want to dim. It can either be automatic or it can be forward or reverse phase. Um, if I do have a fluorescent fixture in there, I can set that up. And finally, from here, I can directly set uh, what, uh, what intensity I want uh, each of my zones to be at in, in different presets. The relay control is fairly simple. Um, since it's just an on off device, I can set uh, which presets the zone or the relay is turned on for. The room controller adds a lot more functionality to it, um, like the ability to say what spaces are being controlled from the room controller. Uh, there is a contact input into this as well, so I can trigger different things from an AV system if I want a single contact input, um, as well as the ability to say what circuits um, are turned on with what presets. And finally, the Echo DMX scene controller. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but this also gives you the ability to patch your fixtures directly from here and set what the profile is. 
So it doesn't necessarily have to be an RGB fixture. It can be an IRGBS fixture, uh, for example, or RGBW fixture, or whatever you'd like it to. Uh, and sorry, the final thing here is the BACnet interface. And the BACnet interface allows us to take a system and show what we're going to expose to the outside world. This allows us to say, I only want BACnet to be able to see spaces one through 10, for example, um, and also be able to say what we're able to control from the BACnet system. So that is pretty much all I have for you guys. I want to jump in now to questions. All right. Uh, thank you, Sean, first of all, for, for giving us that kind of look into Echo. It is, it is There's a lot of pieces to it, um, and it can be a little bit intimidating when you first get into it, but it's also really fun to play around and, and figure out how to uh, answer those solutions that customers come to you with of how to, how to, how to control a room or a series of rooms with it. Um, one question we have is um, you mentioned um, being able to tie in to this system, we obviously with the Echo Access Bluetooth, but also with Wi-Fi, um, what, what would the benefit be to doing Wi-Fi over Bluetooth perhaps? And, and what, how exactly does the Wi-Fi integration come into play? Yeah, of course. I would actually like to jump back to a slide if I can figure out how to easily do that. Uh, give me one second. This slide right here. So um, talking about how Echo integrates with Wi-Fi, uh, the first thing you need on your system is an Echo expansion bridge. This allows me to tie in my ecosystem to a network. And that network can actually consist of a wireless access point or a wireless router, um, which allows me to connect my mobile device or tablet to that system. Um, one of the other options, by the way, before I get into the advantages of doing it this way, is that if I have this on a network, I can actually hook up a computer to it as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be Wi-Fi. It can be a wired connection from a computer that sits in the light booth, and I can actually control my system from that computer if I'd like. So some of the advantages to doing it over Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth is, number one, the connection of Wi-Fi uh, is just generally better than what Bluetooth is. It's a longer range, um, and I can have a system of wireless access points, and I can kind of walk around my entire building and still be able to control and configure things rather than being limited to the, I think, 30 or 40 foot range, whatever it is of Bluetooth to that device. Uh, another advantage though, is that with the Bluetooth echo access, uh, I can control everything on my echo system. So if I have a bridge in place and there's four separate segments and I have one Bluetooth access, uh, I, can I can control everything that's connected to that bridge, but I can only configure the things that are connected to that same segment. If I go with Wi-Fi, I can actually configure everything that's connected to that bridge, not just what's on one particular segment. So in addition to the increased range of it, um, there is the ability to do a lot more configuration with it, uh, which does give you a huge advantage there. Awesome. Um, another question that come, came in was, you mentioned that the, um, the, the preset stations were um, hard engraved. Uh, how do you, what, what what options do you have? Are there options for the, Inspi the other the Inspire stations or any other stations where you can uh, custom label or, or custom engrave? Of course, yeah. So like you mentioned, the preset stations are, are, are engraved here in the factory. Nothing changes with them. They just say preset one through four, or preset one through nine in sequence. Uh, the Inspire stations though, um, you can actually customize these yourselves. Uh, those little keycaps right there are backlit. And you can actually pop off that faceplate and you can remove those labels. And on our website, we have a template that you can go in and you can fill out what kind of nomenclature you want for your buttons. And you can slide those um, plastic slips into those buttons to have different nomenclature. So this doesn't actually require the factory to do any custom engraving for you. And as a result, there's no extra charge to have custom nomenclature. You can do it all yourself um, from a printer. Awesome. And it also allows you to probably change that as, as the client changes their mind, which happens, as we know, all too frequently. <laughs> right, exactly. So um, you guys can do it, of course, um, but you can also turn that template over to the end user. So five years from now, they decide that they don't want button one to do whatever it was originally programmed to. They can also change it later on themselves. Awesome. And I have uh, one last question I see here. Um, does Echo require the same type of commissioning that Paradigm does? It does not. So 
Um, for those of you who might not be familiar, Paradigm does require a certified technician from ETC to go out and program the system. Uh, Echo, on the other hand, is designed as a box good. So you guys can order it directly and you can program it directly. You don't need a field technician from ETC or a certified technician in any way to come out to program the system. We wanted to design this to where it's so easy to program that uh, you can turn this over to an end user who maybe hasn't worked with the lighting system at all before and can set it up fairly easily. So we wanna make this accessible to anybody, not just a certified ETC tech. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sean, very much for giving us an insight into Echo. I wanna thank everyone uh, who attended today. Uh, just a reminder that yes, uh, this is, again, this is being recorded. So if you had to jump out for whatever reason, um, this will be available on our website, as well as an e we'll send out an email with the link to it as well. Um, also, if you have any questions about the system or uh, about designing um, Echo, we have a lot of resources here at FDW, myself included. We would love to answer any questions and help um, design or consult anything with you. Also, we have great partnerships with ETC, uh, so we are very excited to help anyone who might be ready to jump into this world of architectural control. And so you always uh, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, tie a note to a brick and throw it to our window. We're always here to help. Um, thank you, Sean, again, and thank you everyone for watching. This concludes our webinar for today. Thank you, everybody.